Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to look at creating a 2D side scrolling shoot 'em up. Now, even though it's 2D, we're actually going to work in a 3D environment. So we can still use 2D animations and 2D images, but by working in a 3D environment, it allows us to simplify certain things such as collision detection and as far as if uh, certain objects are overlapping other objects, it, it'll just happen naturally because you're in a 3D environment, whereas in a 2D environment, you very explicitly have to state which image is on top of which image. So this is what you see when you first create a new project. Basically, you're looking from the, um, so shall we call it the director's camera. It is not what the player sees. The player sees the point of view of this, call it the production camera, or in the, the terms that the hierarchy uses, it's the main camera. So if you grab the hand tool, you can just slide this around. And if you right click, you can rotate the, again, the director's camera or the designer cam camera, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to rotate it so it's behind the player camera. That way, what we see as the designer is going to be similar to what the player sees. Now, there's three images down here. We're not going to use the witch in this first one. That's going to be in the next tutorial. We're going to use the moon sky and the star distant. So in this first tutorial, we're just going to create the environment. So by default, you can see there's like this horizon. Okay, that's the sky box. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sky box and replace that one. And then just for good measure, we're going to add some stars. So how do we change the sky box? First of all, we need to create a new one. So right click, choose create, and choose material. Ultimately, the sky box is a material. So we'll call this moon sky, and call it BG for background. So we're going to use the moon sky image. So how do we do that? First of all, the material needs to be designated as a a skybox. So click where. So when you have the material highlighted, click where it says shader. Choose skybox, and then you have three types. The one that you're looking at is a procedural. Basically, you say here's the two colors. Um, go ahead and generate the uh, the uh, the gradient. Six-sided is actually a. Uh, you choose six different images because when you think of it, a cube has six sides. So top, bottom, and then the four directions, left, right, forward, backwards. So we're going to use the six-sided one. We're not going to talk about cube map in this one. So six-sided, and it's just a matter of dragging and dropping the image there. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the moon sky. When you're in a 3D environment, when you drag and drop an image into the asset area, it defaults to a texture. We're going to change that. We're going to change this from texture to sprite, going to get rid of MIP maps just so we can compress it, and then we're going to apply, and you can see this is a 1200, well, the one is cut off, but it's a 1200 by 1200 image. So let's go back to our skybox. We're going to click, drag and drop, and put it right there. So far, so good. You've now created a skybox with this image. What we now need to do is we now need to go to window and we go to lighting. This is a window that doesn't seem to be typically open because once you put it into place, you're probably not going to need it anymore. Whereas you're constantly going to work with the hierarchy, you're constantly work with the inspector and the assets. The lighting is something that once you put it in place, you're probably not going to mess with. So it's a window that's not typically open. So you click on it. And as you can see right here, right at the top, skybox. So click on the little circle here. Click on Moon Sky, and you can see it just changed. We'll close that. We'll close that. And again, this actually is six-sided, but because it's a 2D scroller, we don't need the other six, the other five sides. Let's go ahead and run that to see what it looks like. Okay, so it's basically just a simple moon, nothing special. And so far, it's working. Now, it's also very plain because it's not a gradient. We're going to work on that. So we want to give it a sense of depth. We can do that by, say, creating a bed of clouds. And we also can put some uh, stars in front of it. So the stars may not be intuitive how you would do this. But you can actually use a particle system. 
typically you think of a particle system as something concentrated like fire um, or smoke. Well, you can also use it to make the, uh, um, if you spread it out in a large area and have a very, very light concentration of an object, you can actually create this kind of area of effect. So let's see how that would work. So game object, particle system. And what we're going to do is we want it to actually rotate. Well, we're going to rotate this towards the camera. But how much motion is yet to be determined. So we'll make this zero. And those other ones start at, uh, will stop at 180. So now what we need to do is we need to change the shape because we want this origin to be much, much bigger. So if we zoom in, you can see there's a, to the cone, there's a circle that's further away. That's origin. We're just going to click on one of the circles and expand on it so it's coming out of a much larger area. Now we really don't want the stars moving towards you. So we're going to bring speed basically down to just point 0.1. We're going to have a little bit of motion just so they don't seem quite so static. Now let's take a look how that looks. It's not done, but let's see what we've got so far. So now you've got them appearing. Problem is they're static images and it still doesn't cover quite the whole area. So we'll make this a little bit bigger. So go back to radius. And let's bump this up to say 26. Yeah, 32, which is good. Now what we're going to do is we don't want them to just appear and disappear. And we also, probably the lifetime is too long. So let's bring that down to say three. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create another material and apply the material to the particle system. So just as we apply the material to the skybox, we're going to apply a, a material to the particle system. So right click, create material. We'll call this star mat or star material. What you're going to do it's just a matter of dragging and dropping the image over to the um, over to the uh, inspector. But we're going to make one change first. Just as we change the other one from a texture to a sprite, we're going to do the same thing. And now let's do that. So we'll go back to star mat, take star distant, drag and drop it. Now that we've dragged and dropped the star mat, uh, the uh, star image to the star mat, we now need to drag and drop the star mat to the particle system. Let's just take star mat, look for the plus sign, it replaces it. Okay, so far so good. Now you can see it's a square, so that's not right. That's fine. We just have to make another change to the mat itself. So you have to distinguish between the image and the material the image is applied to. In this case, then the particle system that the material is applied to. So we're going to go from standard to particles to additive. Now let's run this. There you go. So now you have something that looks more like a star. But again, it just kind of appears and disappears. We don't want that. We want it to kind of like fade in, kind of glow a little bit, and then fade out. So we'll go back to our particle system. And what we're going to do is start size is only going to be like point. Well, let's leave start size as one. What we'll do is we'll change it in the size over lifetime. So we'll come down here to size over lifetime, click on this, and you can shrink it here. So you just grab that dot, 
So even though this says start size one, you're adjusting it here. We'll create another key, make it go to full size, and then we'll have it shrink out. Now watch what that does. What a huge difference. Rather than having it just suddenly appear, it kind of fades in and fades out. And you got stars over the moon, so you have to be kind of careful of that. So what you can do is rather than just having like one all encompassing, you can actually have, say, a couple. So what we do is we take the particle system, we'll shrink this in a little bit. Move it over, and then say we copy and paste the particle system. And so now we have two, but we don't want it overlapping the moon. Let's see how that looks. There you go. And since we have the moon and the stars, let's now add some clouds. And that should wrap up this tutorial because we said this one, we're just focusing on the background image and then we'll get into the actual side scrolling uh, shoot 'em up aspect. So let's now add game object. So another particle system. This time we're gonna rotate it sideways. Just fix it here. So 0, 90, and 90. We really don't want a cone like that. So for shape, deals will zoom in. And this time rather than changing the inner cone, we'll change the outer. It's more of a cylinder than a cone. Now we'll change the inner like that. So let's click on the camera and see exactly where that's lined up. So it looks like it's right over here. So we need to move it over. Actually, let's rename this one. This one's going to be called clouds. And Miles will call this one stars. And it's okay to use the same name multiple times. We'll also call this one stars. You can call it stars left, stars right if you really want. So let's take the cloud, move it over. See how that looks. Okay, that's better. Now for the star, uh, for the clouds, excuse me, we need to change their size, change the speed, a whole bunch of things. So first, let's make the size more like four. Let's change the renderer to a stretched billboard. Let's also make them a little bit like a bluish gray. So let's go to start color, something like that. Want them to move slower. We also want them to last way, way longer. So let's make that 20. And when you're looking at how long something, uh, a particle lasts, got to keep in mind um, max particles because the longer a particle survives, the more total particles you're going to have on the screen. So really uh, make sure that you don't exceed this because what will happen is you'll get a gap where no particles are created. So we'll bump that up just to be safe. We'll have this be as pre-warmed. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so it's not at the bottom of the screen for one thing. And it's not quite all the way to the left either. So we'll move it a little bit more to the left. Move it a little bit more down. And I don't think it was lasting long enough. So let's make this 40. And now let's see how that looks. Okay. So not quite... So it looks like this needs to be, well, how close are we are to the camera? So this has a Z of 42. The camera has a Z of negative 10. So it's way far away from the camera. So if we move it closer to the camera, it'll actually take care of some of those issues. And this is what I was saying about, about why it's easier to work in the 
um, uh, the 3D environment. So see, just by making it, just by moving it closer, it took care of some of those issues. Let's move it over, move it, I don't want to move it any closer, but we'll move it up a bit. There we go. Move it up a bit more, move it a little bit closer. Getting there. And the reason why I keep moving it up every time I move it forward is because as it moves forward, some of the bottom is clipped off. So to adjust, moving it up and towards the screen. There we go. So that's better. So now you kind of have clouds at the bottom. Not quite right. We'll slide it over a little bit. There. So you have nice, gently rolling clouds. Now that's just one layer. If you want, you could add like a second or a third layer. So the ones further out are a slightly different color. But I think that's it for now. So we now have our background environment. So we've got the moon, we've got the stars. Again, you can customize this to your liking. So maybe the stars don't glow as uh, that they disappear quicker. Or maybe you want the clouds to be a little bit slower. Whatever you think uh, is best. Now, having said that, I just realized something. If this is going to be a first person, excuse me, not first person, if this is going to be a side-scrolling shooter, we actually might want the clouds moving in the other direction. So what you can do is you can take this entire thing, just rotate it, so it looks like it needs to be two seventy. Yeah. And now you just move it that way. See how that looks. So now you've got the clouds moving against you because you're going to be on the left side of the screen and then this already gives, already gives you a little bit of sense of movement. All right, so that should do it for now. That gives us our moon, our stars, and our cloud. And the next time we'll actually get into the control of the character.